Hey, welcome back to the Good Green Home Show. Today, our guest is William Moss. And William, you have been out to my garden before. I so love your garden tips. Welcome to the show with Rich and I. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. William, thanks for being here. We really appreciate it and uh, very excited to to get to learn from an expert such as yourself and happy to hear. Shauna tells me a lot of great things. I've seen some of the YouTube videos and, and you know, learning about you, reading about you. Pretty excited to, to get your perspective on, on uh, the horticulture industry. Okay, good. That's, that sounds great. I mean, that's what I'm here for. Wonderful. First, I have to ask you a personal question. You have to tell us about your garden uh-huh. this year. You have told me these wondrous stories about a huge garden that you work on. Well, do, well, it's true. I actually have three gardens that I work on in Chicago, and uh, I'm currently sitting right now in South Carolina, where my family is from. <laughs> and I have some gardens here too, but they, you know they take care of themselves mostly. I'm only here like four times a year. But in Chicago, I've got a community garden, and that's why I grow a lot of my vegetables. And then I also have my main garden, which is my rooftop garden, which is sits right above my condo. Uh, and then I have my mother-in-law's, who I call my ma, her backyard. So the three of those gardens are three completely different spaces. The backyard garden is like a nice woodland, very ornamental garden. The community garden is really strictly for food and some flowers. And then on my rooftop is where I think I have a lot of the stuff that makes me unique. It makes me um, a, a true urban gardener. I've got mm-hmm. vegetables. I've got some fruit trees up there, some nut trees. I grow perennials, wow. lots of annual flowers, water plants, tropicals. I've got figs. I've got mandevillas. I've got bougainvilleas. Holy All cow. All these cool things on, on the rooftop. Chicago. rooftop. <laughs> on a, a rooftop in, in Chicago. Chicago. That's on a rooftop. wow. Astounding, <laughs> astounding. And I mean, can you estimate how many pounds of food do you get out of that sucker every year? Out of the rooftop, uh, pounds pounds are pretty tough because I, I, well, I used to weigh and it was mm-hmm. it was in the hundreds. But I will say that we don't buy produce from March to December. Wow. And that's good so because you have every, twin we, babies at home. So you're really feeding I've your got family. A twin, 18 <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, How do you well, do that and run son, three gardens? <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> well, I got a very loving and dedicated wife. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Well, I'm glad that you're growing organic for everybody. What is what's happening in uh, William World this year? What you doing? Well, I, I am I, I'm extremely busy at this point. We we have a business now called Get- and, uh, William, what we do William, we and we, William, yes. I'm so sorry to interrupt. Yes. We didn't hear your business name because you cut out. Could you tell us again what that is? Yes. Get out and grow. Oh, cool. Get out and grow. Mm-hmm. Um, we're just, get out and grow. Um, we're just sort of starting up our website now and getting it going. So you can always check that out. Uh, but what we do is we go to, to festivals and to schools, out to special events, and we teach about gardening or the science of gardening everything is based upon national science standards so we go and we teach the students whether they be um, first graders 12th graders college students or just adults and we teach them about um, some of the scientific principles you can find in gardening and try to sneak in a little bit of education with a lot of fun so we'll go and do, do a seed starting activity and along the way we'll hit all of these science points but the but the whole thing about it is to get people, kids in particular, but people using their hands, getting outdoors, having fun in the outdoor environment so that you're learning, but it doesn't feel like learning. So we, we try to use the outdoors and nature as a classroom. So that's the main thing that's going to keep me busy this year, going out teaching and doing things like that. I'm also working on a new TV show. Oh, uh, awesome. This my, yeah. And which this will be my fourth TV show. Wow. And, and is it through HGTV again or is it a different network? You know, they're going to pitch the HGTV. So far, we've only shot two pilots. We're going to shoot three pilots and then, mm-hmm. then have it go off. It's going to be a good show. It looks really nice. Um, so so that that should be coming out this year. And I'm, I'm, I'm also working with QVC. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'll be I'll be there uh, selling plants and explaining how to grow plants on QVC. So, um, you know, it's, it's a very busy time for me. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like it. You got the the eighteen month old twins, the the television show, all these different gardens and the yeah. different styles. And you know, I want to thank you for for the education that you're doing with the kids because I think that 
the next generation needs to learn how to garden because it's important not only for just the well-being of the of the human race but also just the horticulture industry and the gardening industry in general we need the that next generation to get into gardening because we you know concerned about there being a kind of a, a disconnect and that next generation so i think what you're doing there is absolutely wonderful and the community garden i want to ask you about the community garden and it sounds like you're growing food Possibly, I'm 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 uh, kind of picking up that it's maybe for um, the the needy or the less fortunate that might need food. How how does that work? How does the community garden work? Um, before I get to that, let me just say you are absolutely right, Rich. And uh, my insidious plan, just you know, <laughs> your evil master uh, plan. Yes, <laughs> my insidious plan is to get the kids hooked on being outdoors and have them have great experiences and the, and the kind of spark that natural curiosity early in life, mm -hmm. because uh, then that way they have something to think back on when they're in high school, when they're in college, maybe they'll go into a career in science. Maybe they'll think a different way about the forest and forest preserves and about trying to keep them around. Maybe they'll know the to nature so they won't take it for granted or just completely be indifferent about it. So mm -hmm. that's my insidious plan. It's not, it's not just to grow a new group of, of gardeners, but to grow a new group of people who are environmentally and scientifically aware. So Absolutely. I'm glad you picked up on that. Yeah, that's my plan. Love it. I love it. Uh, Caregivers. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. But as far as the community garden, basically we, we all have plots. There's a huge community garden, maybe like 140 plots. Most of them are about 20 by 20 and most people like myself do grow some extra stuff to give to the needy we mm -hmm. have a we have a collection every uh two every twice a week where we go and we take our produce to a certain area up front and someone comes and gathers it and takes it out to some of the food pantries but we also like to take the produce we grow and give it to like friends and family who aren't necessarily gardeners and don't know what a fresh tomato tastes like mm -hmm. or don't 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 know what okra is or things like that so we like to not only give it to those who are needy but those who are um not gardeners so we can kind of show them hey look you can, with just a small patch of your backyard you could have something that tastes like this yeah perfect and there's nothing better than a fresh tomato to recruit new gardeners <laughs> <laughs> Like fresh tomato or like a fresh sweet pepper or something oh, yeah. like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It really, really makes a difference. Absolutely. So, I mean, yeah, fresh sweet pepper, it's, oh, yeah, it's hard to put down. Now, on the, the rooftop yeah. garden, is this a, a raised bed that, uh, or, or is this a roof that was specifically, uh, you know, manufactured uh, or built to ha have a garden on it? How, how do you go about doing that? And, you know, I don't think many people would think about being able to, hey, I'm going to have a rooftop garden, but... Mm -hmm. How would somebody that may be living in an urban setting that might have access and the ability to do it uh, go about starting that? Now, to have an actual have an actual green roof would be the dream, but that's not what I have right now. I have a regular old um, silver silver lined roof, and what we've done is we decked everything completely out, and I have over two hundred and sixty five containers that I grow in. Okay. Wow. Um, now, see, that, that sounds impressive until you hear that we don't have an elevator because we're only a four-story building. So every container, every piece of soil, every plant has been carried up there by me. So uh, <laughs> now it sounds almost obsessive and crazy. It doesn't sound quite so impressive. It wow. This is about muscle, my friend. That's muscle. Some, that's some wow. good exercise right there. That's funny. Now, when you are you concerned about the weight limits that your roof might have? That's one concern. I really want to grow on my roof, uh, but I don't know how to do it so that because I'm concerned about weight limits. What did you find out from the city? Because we're in a newer building, we were able to speak directly with the developer, and we know exactly the weight, the weight specifications, how, how many pounds per square foot can be allowed. Mm -hmm. And um, when, we put, when we had the decking put on, all that does is help distribute the weight evenly throughout the entire roof. So there are no, like, heavy spots, mm -hmm. you know Perfect. what I'm talking about. So mm -hmm. all the weight is evenly distributed on the deck. So um, having found out what, what are pounds per square foot, Foot were and then having the deck put down, we know that we're well beneath the well beneath the limits because most roofs have to be built to withstand at least two feet of snow. 
Uh, oh, absolutely. It's three feet of snow, and that mm. is incredibly That's a lot heavy. of weight. Mm-hmm. So, you know, so we're well within the limits, and we don't do anything. That's why I don't have raised beds up there, because I don't want any one big, tremendous 500-pound weight anywhere. Mm-hmm. Most of the containers are about 15 to 17 inches wide. I've got some that are 30, you know, the uh, largest ones that have the trees and things in them are a little bigger. But all of that's all that weight is, is pretty spread out. There's no container up there that weighs more than 150 pounds. Mm-hmm. So, you know, um, you, those are some of the things you have to think about. No one's going to go crazy like me and put in 20 seats of our containers. I'm sure of that. But, but, but you know, but... For the person who wants to have 12 containers on their rooftop, if you're in a city and it's relatively new construction, you'll have no problem asking the developer what what the standards are. And uh, you can always choose potting soil, which makes mm-hmm. everything much lighter. Mm-hmm. You choose plastic containers or wooden containers, which which don't hold as much weight in them as well. So you you do things to make it lighter. But for me, it, it, it wasn't just because I was trying to reduce the weight on the roof. It was because I was trying to reduce the weight of carrying things for flights. Absolutely. <laughs> so, that's a lot so, of flights to walk yeah. up. And do, how do you keep it all water? Do you hand water it or is it on the system? Well, I, I hand water mostly because I have set it up so that most of the uh, flowers and perennials don't require much water. I've chosen desert plants and prairie plants, Mm -hmm. plants that are used to Chicago's um, temperatures, temperatures and fluctuations. So about half what I grow up there doesn't require consistent watering. You know, maybe I can water it once a week, once every two weeks, and they'll be fine. Some of them I don't water at all throughout the entire year. The vegetables I have very close to my um, to my spigot. Um, I recently had, not recently, a couple of years ago, I had water installed on the roof because because before then I was carrying up five gallon buckets oh, of water. Wow. And, <laughs> and that, oh my goodness. That, that's too much. That was too much. This yeah. explains so, your uh, big muscles now. I know, I know what's going on. It's, it's moving up to the roof garden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, it is. Yes, it is. But, but you know, having having a water source is going to be crucial if you want to grow good veggies. Because once I got the water source and I was able to water more regularly, then we just started producing just tons of tomatoes and peppers, uh, pumpkins, watermelon, hmm. um, cassava melons. I had all sorts of things growing in that bright rooftop sunshine. It, you know, if you got the sunshine and that water and good soil, you're going to be successful. Now, uh, let me ask you about the pumpkins. I know mm-hmm. Shauna was telling me about the, I don't know if you call them designer gourds or if they're a type of pumpkin, but I, I understand you do some specialty uh, fall produce. Yes, I do. And they are actually, cheese pumpkins would be the name people would use for them, but they're actually more closely related to butternut squash than pumpkin. Okay. So you can imagine like a butternut squash, you, you pull it out, stretch it out, and squat it down. Squat it That's flat. That's not what they're like. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And the, yeah, the, he brought all these yeah. flat pumpkins. I tell you what we'll do. We'll actually, we'll put the video up yeah. on the website when we get the website up. But it, they look like they're squished, like little short people. Yeah. <laughs> short pumpkins. Mm-hmm. Like a <laughs> turban gourd or what do you, yes. yeah, there's a couple different types, but yeah. And they come in different yeah. colors. Like he brought man. blue ones. Oh, cool. Yeah. The blue pumpkin that's not been painted blue, but naturally grows that way. It was super cool. That's fun so for the kids, all too. Sorts of mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. All sorts of colors. And one of the reasons that I grow them is, one, they're cool. Two, they're super easy to grow. And three, they have so much flesh in them. You can use them for anything. You know how you have like a jack o pumpkin and it's just like a half-inch flesh and a bunch of like stringy, noodly stuff? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Um, that's not the case, guys. They've got like two or three inches of solid flesh in there. So they're good for eating. They're good for decoration. They're good for gifts. And you get tons of them. I, literally, the year Sean was talking about, I had over 500 pounds of cheese pumpkins. So uh, <laughs> they're easy to grow. So, and they're, I understand they're good to feed the wildlife as well if you want to leave some stuff out for the deer. And, oh. and uh, I, I know a guy, I know this is going to sound almost as crazy as William carrying all this stuff up four flights of stairs. But I know a guy who has a black bear as a pet. Oh, that's crazy. And he had, yeah, he's, uh, he lives in Indiana and he actually, he's got elk as well. But at the end of uh, the season, our garden center, we give him our uh, leftover pumpkins and he oh. feeds them to his bear. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah and, but and those would be great because they got a lot more flesh, like William was saying. So I just learned something new. I didn't even think about that. Pets need vegetables. Mm-hmm. We just had a pet episode where we talked about adding pumpkin to your pet food. 
And so canned pumpkin, but mm -hmm. imagine if you, you could just make it yourself and boil it, or, you know, cook it down, roast it. Mm -hmm. um, you know what? When you came that day, you left a pumpkin with me. And what I did was I put the pumpkin in whole without making a cut into the oven and roasted it without cutting anything out of it. It roasted right down. And then when I pulled it out, all the pieces I just pulled out with my fingers. You didn't, I mean, I could just dig out the, the seeds and everything. It's super, mm. super fun for kids to have that experience, to see how it's roasted from beginning to end. Hmm. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So you, yeah. have, you have quite the adventure happening this year since you're so busy. Um, what type of products are you selling on QVC? Well, you know, I'm, I'm more of an educator on QVC. So what happens mm -hmm. is I go there and doing their um, plant shows where they're talking about buying plants or they're offering up trees or shrubs, people can actually call in or actually on the TV ask to speak to me and I will answer their questions right there about the plants, about how they grow, um, how best to design them, how best to group them, the best companion plants and things like that. I've been, I've been very blessed. I have gardened in 40 states here in America. I have actually turned soil in 40 states. So I'm uh, very blessed to have gardened lots of places and know lots of different climates and, uh, and what Zones. plants do best and things mm -hmm. like that. So I've been very lucky. And uh, th th this job allows me to go out and speak to people about their gardens and help them make the best choices. My friend, luck wow. has nothing to do with it. You've worked very hard to get all the skill behind you. And the best part about what you do is you turn it around to the community. Uh, part of it is that community garden. But I went to uh, an event several years ago where William and I were both uh, asked to be speakers, essentially, and there were kids there. Well, William got up, he did jumping jacks and exercises and uh, multiple, <laughs> remember multiplication for the kids. And the mm -hmm. kids were so darn riled up. I mean, they were so excited about growing, about being a part of, you know, a community effort. And then we all went and planted together. Now, I have to tell you, when I got up in front of, they wanted me to speak in front of the crowd too. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> We're I gotta go follow that. <laughs> We're going to grow. Uh, there was nothing I could say because William is fantastic with kids. Now, you used to, back in the day uh, in Chicago, you worked a lot exclusively with children. Are you still doing some of that work? Um, not as much. I still go out to like one classroom a month. I'll go teach, and I still work with kids at the Chicago Botanic Garden. But, uh, but I was actually a um, public school teacher for three years in sixth grade. Um, before, well, that was a lifetime ago. It seems like now. <laughs> <laughs> but in the Chicago, you were in the Chicago public school systems, though, right? I was in Chicago public school system for three years. I taught yeah. sixth grade, and then after that, you know, I went to run youth programs for the Chicago Botanic Garden. Uh, so you know, I've been working with kids for a while, and I and I just don't want to let that go. That's why I still go do things at schools, and uh, you know, volunteer at these events, and we go out to do festivals and all that type of stuff. Because uh, really, we've got to have find some way. We are like 17th or like 20 something in science now. When I was a kid, it was all about, you know, the space race and the moon. And, and we were sparked to learn science and have mm -hmm. that curiosity. Uh, and, and you just don't you don't see that today because we don't have any sort of mm. big push for anything nationally. So, uh, you know, I think it's part of our effort as gardeners. We know how fun, how healthy how beneficial it is to be outdoors and to garden. So I think it falls upon us to kind of uh, pull these kids along and tell them that message. Let them know it can be fun, too. It's not just work. It can be fun. It can be rewarding. So that's what I try to do. Well, well, William, you know, where did it start for you? You know, we got, we've got we got about another minute. So just let us know, you know, where did this gardening uh, fever passion. or passion <laughs> begin for you before we wrap it up because I'm just curious to know how did you, how did you get the the interest sparked? Well, you know, it, it started me before I even knew it. I was I was made to to uh, garden with my grandfather on his little farm, and I had to do the yard for my grandmother and my great grandmother and all that stuff, and I hated it. <laughs> and uh, I decided to go to school. <laughs> I decided to go to school in Chicago, and I went there, and I actually majored in history and chemistry. Hmm. And I came out, and I was teaching, and um, I started to fix, see that the kids were having a hard time with science. So I brought in a bunch of plants for them to kind of work with, and they loved it. They picked up on it. They they gained a full year on their science. Wow, and, that's uh, awesome. It was just, 
it was really exciting. And I thought, you know, maybe this is something I want to do. And I was I was teaching for three years inside. It didn't seem like it was for me. And this job came up where I could be outside doing something and teaching. So I took it and I've been doing it ever since. Wow. And it, that's a great story. Uh, and the entire story is success for you, but also because it's all been triggered uh, for the love of science and math and children. Uh, I'm so glad you came today yes. and spoke on the show with us. Good luck with those twin boys and, and good luck with that insidious plan. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, William. Thanks for coming on our show, William. And I hope you'll come back soon. I will. Take all care. right. Take care. Take care. Hi, Rich from Al Sapoma Nursery in St. John here to remind you to think outside the box store and shop at your locally owned Best of the Northwest Indiana Region Garden Center. Al Sapoma Nursery, the best of every season. In Frankfurt on LaGrange Road in St. John on Route 41. See their weekly circular at allsipnursery.com.